Over the last few years, Canyon has been making some really good road bikes, some of the best road bikes in fact, but it hasn't until now made a full carbon fibre cyclocross race bike. Well, it has now. This is the brand new Inflight CF SLX, and I think it's a really good option if you're in the market for a new carbon fibre cyclocross race bike, as I'll explain. It's certainly a unique looking bike. There's a clear case of function over form here. The engineers have really steered the design of the bike rather than the marketing team taking the lead, and I admire that. That's a canyon way. Their approach is all about functionality and purpose of design. They don't do anything for any random reasons. Every part of the bike has a solid uh, reasoning behind it. It's there for a purpose, and it's all about offering the highest performance possible. So the full carbon fibre frame and fork, it's designed to be stiff and lightweight. Canyon claims a weight of 940 grams for a size medium frame that we have here. That's very light for a cross bike, it's even light for a road bike. There are no concessions to versatility or practicality, there are no eyelets for mud guards or racks, so you won't be fitting racks and using it for winter training and commuting. It's all about racing. They stripped away all those features in that pursuit of racing performance. Designed around disc brakes with the now standard 12mm throw axles and flat mount calipers. All the hoses and cables are rooted inside the frame, so it's a very clean looking bike. Talking of clean, they've also looked to increase clearance around the rear tyre, and particularly reduce any areas where the mud can clog and stick to the frame. So there's no bridges on a seat stay or a chain stay. If you've ever done a cyclocross race in muddy conditions, you know that throughout the race the bike can get heavier. If you don't have the luxury of a second bike and a pit crew jet washing your bike in between laps, and that's something that Canyon have tried to address so the bike doesn't increase weight during a muddy race. Canyon offers three models in the range, there are two with SRAM 1x11 and one with Shimano 2x11, so you have a choice depending on what preference you have. This is the cheapest bike in the range and costs £2,500. I think it's really well specced for money, and it certainly compares well with other bikes in this category. So on this bike, you get a SRAM rival 1x11 group set with a 42 chain ring and a wide range cassette, hydraulic disc brakes with 160mm rotors. A nice detail on this bike is the Quark power meter ready chain set. So all you have to do to make it power enabled is replace the spider with a new quark power meter spider and you have a bike with power and you see how I do that in the video linked above. So that means you don't have to ditch the whole crank set if you want to go to power and if you're racing at a high level then you might want power for racing and for training so that's a really nice addition. It really shows that Canyon has a focus on the needs of a cyclocross racer. Moving on, the DT Swiss wheels are an excellent choice. Lightweight, stiff and reliable and the aluminium rims are tubeless ready. The Schwalbe X1 tyres are 33 metres wide, because that's UCI legal, and they're tubeless ready too, so you can take advantage of the tubeless compatibility and ditch your tubes and put some sealant in there and never worry about punctures ever again. The tyres have a good tread pattern for muddy conditions, good all round use tyre really. So it's a lot of bike for the money. On the scales it's 8 kilograms, which is light for a bike of this specification. I've tested bikes with similar build kits and they come in about a half kilogram heavier. So it's a really good weight, so they're not the lightest cross bike you can build up. It's not just a bright yellow bumblebee paint job that makes this bike stand out. It is, of course, the kinked top tube. When the bike launched, the comments on social media were really interesting to read, and people were really mixed. People either love it or hate it. It's a real Marmite thing. The idea behind it is simply to raise the top tube height for easier shouldering. So when you're dismounting, you can get the bike over your shoulder more easily. But they also want to retain a tight rear triangle for handling and also to increase the amount of seat post that extend out of the frame for a bit of extra deflection at the saddle. So the kink top tube is their solution of both raising the top tube and keeping the requirements of a tight rear triangle and extended seat post. Yes, it's a distinctive and um, Marmite thing, but in use it actually works really well. Other details worth bringing to your attention include the internal seat clamp. You can get to the bolt underneath a rubber flap inside the kink of the top tube and the top of the seat post is sealed so no mud and water will get inside the frame. One very clever little detail is the redundant front mech on this SRAM 1x11 bike being replaced by a very small compact chain guide. So I've not had any problems with chains dropping off on the 1x11 group sets. That down to the clutch mechanism in the rear mech and the wide narrow chain ring. But it's nice to have that little extra um, reassurance, especially if you're racing, that the chain isn't going to drop off too easily. The stunning carbon fibre handlebar is a feature we've seen on Canyon road bikes over the last few years and they've brought it over to their cross bike. It makes a lot of sense really. It's a very nice looking piece of kit. Aerodynamic and quite comfortable. There's a bit of deflection noticeable when you're riding over bumpy ground. 
You can adjust the stem height by moving the spacers up and down above the stem. Very easy to adjust. On a trail and in a race situation, the whole package has come together really well. The light and stiff carbon frame provides a very responsive ride, very immediate in the way it responds to your power. On the handling front, it handles the high speed and low speed sections of a cross course really well. In low speed corners, of which you get a lot in cyclocross races, it's very nimble and precise. It's very easy to put it where you want it and really make a nice line around a tight corner. At high speed, it's very stable, very planted when you're banking through a high speed corner and trying to take people on the fast section of the course. Really handles that kind of low speed, high speed balance really well. When it comes to dismounting, whether over hurdles or running up a steep bank or steps, the kink top tube really does offer a tangible benefit. Okay, we're talking about a small benefit. But at the top level of racing, the margin between winning and losing can be very low. At my level of racing, the margin is much wider. But I did really appreciate the design. Your hand naturally falls to the kink, and when you lift it, the bike will balance, so it's easier to carry it over smaller hurdles. When you have to shoulder the bike for longer stretches of running, the bike goes over your shoulder really easily. It's nice and comfortable to carry, as comfortable as carrying a bike on the shoulder can be. Comfort isn't usually something you consider in a cyclocross race bike when your lungs are trying to explode out of the chest and you can taste blood. But the Canyon Inflight CF SLX is a very comfortable bike over rough terrain. There's no small amount of deflection at a handlebar. It's definitely more deflecting than a regular handlebar and stem setup. And there's plenty of deflection at the saddle. You can really notice the saddle actually moving back and forth when you're riding over rough ground. It's a small thing, but it can really make a difference on a course when you're tiring and fatigue can be an issue. And away from racing, if you're doing a longer adventure cyclocross ride of like 60, 70, 80 kilometers maybe, the bike is very comfortable over really rough terrain that you're likely to encounter on such a long ride. The rest of the equipment works really well too. The wheels and tyres are exceptional. I'm not sure why you spend the extra money on the carbon fire wheels unless you really wanted carbon fire wheels. But these are lightweight and stiff. And I've had them tubeless and I've not had any problems with flat tyres or punches at all. They've been really reliable. The SRAM Rival 1x11 group set, well it just works really well. The gear shifts are nice and easy. There's plenty of gear range for both racing and longer kind of cyclocross sporty rides. The brakes are very powerful, loads of modulation at the levers as well. The larger hoods, they look a bit ugly, I'll agree, but they actually provide a nice area to plant your hands against so your hands aren't going to slip over the hoods, especially if you're riding in the mud and the rain. I really like the Canyon Aspect, a quark power meter ready crank set. So we have to replace the spider with a power meter spider and you have power on the bike. It really shows that Canyon knows what a cyclocross racer is looking for in the bike and gives that nice upgrade path if you're looking to really get into your cyclocross racing in a serious way. So to sum up, the Canyon Inflight CF SLX is a really good cyclocross race bike. It's ready to go out of the box. All the equipment works really well. There's nothing I would change on a bike at all. It just fits me really well. Unless you want the carbon fire wheels of the more expensive model, I would just go with this bike because it offers all you want in a nice, reliable, lightweight package. There are loads of options if you're looking for a cyclocross race bike. And while Canyon doesn't have the pedigree of a lot of brands, I think the performance, the price, and the whole package come together really well to offer a really compelling choice if you're in the market for a cross bike for racing. And I think the Canyon is definitely worth a closer look. Get my thumbs up, it's a bike I've really enjoyed riding and testing for the last few months. I'll be sad to see it go. One thing is for sure, that kink top tube is going to become a lot more commonplace on the cyclocross circuits. That was the Canyon Inflight CF SLX. Does it get your thumbs up? Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button just here so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. And as ever, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.